Hi guys, Johan here from Phoenix Boatworks and uh, today we'll continue our series in restoring the GP14 um, sailing dinghy called Gay Nymph. So our next step in restoration is actually removing all the fittings um, before we can start sanding and uh, assess some more damage that might have been um, due to water leakage into these fittings. So the tools that you'll need for this is a needle nose pliers for getting out little um, screws and stuff if, if um, it's stuck. You'll also need obviously a screwdriver. Um, I use a universal screwdriver that can take normal bits so that I don't have to have 10, 20 screwdrivers um, on me. I can only have a few bits in my pocket so it's quite easy. Um, I'd recommend um, going for this rather than a whole set of screwdrivers. And then obviously um, a good old crusty chisel that's seen some better days. Yeah. And um, a pencil and some masking tape. So we'll get to why we are going to use these. But um, first of all, the most important tool in removing your fittings is recording or cataloging where they go. So for me, the best in the old days people used to do a sketch of a boat and sketch each part and label each part but today we have the cell phone the mighty mighty cell phone which is quite nice because um, you can go around the boat and take various pictures of your boat and um, that's all in a um, chronological order on your phone so you can go have a look again so i usually start from the bow work my way along the um, starboard side um, then the stern and then back to the front to, um, on the port side so um, you always know that will be the sequence of, of your pictures that, that you did um, and then nice thing about the cell phone is as well it's got a flash on so and small so you can use a phone you can put it into um, inspection hatches and actually take photos from inside so sometimes you've got your pintles for your rudder um, that's usually in a stern tank sometimes um, but you need to see how it's been fastened it has been um, bolts um, and nuts or just screws or or maybe a, a backing plate or something so then you can actually see what's happening there rather than just going at the screws and um, blah 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 so yeah so after you so after you have gone around and um, catalogued all the pieces on your boat um, what I like to do is I like to take uh, three boxes basically. One would be for the starboard side, one for the port side, and one for all the fittings that come off the center line. So that would be from your bow fittings to um, your mastep fittings to your rudder fittings at the back. So to actually know where, where everything is um, when you get back to it. Because a lot of the fittings are the same obviously because it's duplicated on each side of the boat so um, over years people have used maybe different screws and everything so you want to use the same screws as well and the same fittings um, that's maybe been modified anything over the years especially on these old boats um, so it can go back precisely as it was um, and that you can reuse the holes that's, that's on the boat and then you need to redrill or deepen holes or actually fill up holes that's now a short screw or something um, due to you swapping the two around. So it, you can go ahead and just use your screwdriver on um, taking out all the uh, screws on, on the fittings. Um, but the problem is that um, it takes quite long, especially if you've got a big boat like a GP14 with a whole bunch of fittings. You want something faster, so here's a comparison of um, using a screwdriver or using an electric drill. Or, electric screwdriver to remove fittings. So sometimes you've got um, a problem that the screw doesn't want to come out due to, to the, the old older wood that's um, disintegrated where the thread used to be. So you'll sound spinning, 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 spinning at. So what I like to do rather than just use a needle nose pliers and pluck it out or, or somehow get it out with force 
is I either use my nail just underneath the um, screw head and screw it out or I use my old trusty very old very used and a lot of paint um, chisel so sometimes you you do have a, a fitting that's that's a little bit after you've removed the screw still fastened to the um, but um, that's due to people over here is just slapping on more um, varnish or paint rather than actually taking off the fittings or taping off the fittings. So what I'd use is I'll use a, a broad chisel so that you don't hurt the wood. So it's got a nice big surface that's going to take the impact. And just work it underneath the um, fitting and lift slightly going around and around so that um, you can loosen that fitting and lift it out of the boat. So there's one thing we haven't covered yet the masking tape and why we need that this is actually you can use insulation tape probably as well packaging tape but I just like um, masking tape because you can write on it so after I removed the fittings as I said um, a lot of the times people over here use different screws um, or when they initially put it on they have different screws in the arsenal so this little cleat over here um, if you look at the screws um, I don't know if you can see that. That screw has got a different head and thread than that screw. So the thread in the wood would be different um, unless you're going to cover the holes that obviously would be a lot better um, or not be a problem then. So I would go, I'd leave the screws precisely in where they were in the boat or in the fitting and I would just use my masking tape and around that one and then around that one okay, I used a little bit of a lot of masking tape there so now the screws can't fall out and you know exactly which one was in which hole on this and just to make sure you remember because there can be a whole lot of cleats on the same boat and on the same side of the boat I'll actually write on uh, where it would be midship board starboard and uh, which one it would be so that's my foolproof sort of system of not getting my fittings mixed up after removal or being able to reuse the same screws in the same holes um, so I don't have to redraw or have smaller size screws in bigger holes or, or vice versa. Two takeaways from this video is firstly catalog where your fittings are before you remove them. So that's where it gets important to remember your cell phone which is quite easy because it's always on you. Uh, just charge it and obviously the masking tape um, or uh, other kind of system that you can use to actually mark all your fittings um, and then the second one is take your time there's nothing more detrimental than or more problematic than removing fittings fast and ripping out wood or actually harming the thread uh, or using force to get it out because you're just in a rush so take your time catalog everything and um, yeah, enjoy the process. Um, you get to know your boat a lot better when you actually spend time fixing and redoing and um, taking care of your boat. So yeah, that's me for this episode. Um, be sure to... And then I'll see you on the next episode when we'll be looking at removing the varnish on the GP14 called Ganymph. GP14 restoration, that's a wrap for now. Hi guys, Johan here from Phoenix Boatworks and uh, today we can go into what we basically do.